Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Mark Phillips is noticing something interesting in the space. Fellow contrarian investors, current XRP USD sentiment on TradingView is a sell. You know what that means. For me, it's a buy signal. Of course, never do as they say, do as they do. And so when people are feeling bearish, that's when you buy more. Uh, again, this is not financial advice from Mark Phillips or myself, but it is something you must think of when you're feeling a little blue that the bull run still hasn't continued to rally as much as you'd like. Now, XRP is trading right now at about 28 cents. Uh, just wanted to get back to this for a sec, but on the other side, says XRP underscore crow, you have extreme greed in crypto market sentiment. It's a sell sign. Uh, Gator Trading saying, that's not how it works. Sentiment is the contrarian signal. Technicals only point to trends and moving averages. A few people here obviously having different opinions on this, but uh, I'm with Mark Phillips. When people are feeling bearish, this is when you buy more, guys. This is a great pullback for XRP. Let me uh, bring up Bitcoin here. Uh, we can see Bitcoin has pulled back a little bit, but ultimately showing signs of an upward trend. And that's what we need to look at. That's what we need to focus on, the upward trend over the long haul. Um, when we go back to Bitcoin, historically, we have seen days. Uh, okay, there have been bearish days leading up all the way through 2017. And we just got to keep that in mind, okay? So here's a bearish period here. Uh, just pointing out a few that I'm seeing here. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one, okay? And so how many days were we bearish before we continue to see an uptick? Uh, well, this one took a while. It looks like this, uh, we were bearish from all time high here, bearish one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know what? What's easier than doing that? I'll just put the date range here. Uh, starting to go bearish here. Uh, up until here, that was 43 days of a bearish trend before we started rebounding back. Uh, and even that, we didn't hit this same high until back over here. Okay, you can see this high was hit over here. Okay, and we didn't hit that high until right here. So if I bring that over, when did we reach that high? that would have been 165 days later. Now that's an extreme example. I don't think it's going to take 165 days. I think we're gonna bounce back uh, relatively quickly, maybe not. Okay, it could be relatively quickly. I don't want to fill your hearts with hope, uh, but it could still be several days, maybe even weeks, maybe even months. Let's look at this one here. We saw Bitcoin uh, hit this high here. Okay, and didn't reach that high again till about over here, but uh, the bearish trend turned uh, after about, uh, so it's from here. Bearish trend turned after about 15 days, so two weeks, but then how many days did it take to get all the way to all time high? It was 51 days, so uh, almost two months, one and a half months. Okay, I could see this playing out as a more realistic scenario. Let's not forget, guys, uh, we saw significant movement in a short time frame, so uh, realistically, it is not unlikely that we could see the downtrend continue for several days before moving back upward, okay? That is just um, trading. That's just trader psychology, and it all depends on who's willing to buy, who's willing to sell, who's tired out, and who is not. Don't let it discourage you. Uh, it's certainly not discouraging Mark Phillips, nor is it discouraging myself. Anders L on Twitter at X underscore underscore Anderson points this out, though. A hypothetical situation, not financial advice, by the way. If we see another scenario where XRP pumping last from BTC whales switching from BTC to XRP, XRP could go up a ton while the rest of the market tanks since tied to BTC. I would then take some of that XRP and buy my long-term coins. It's an interesting strategy. Uh, what I think he's referring to is this. Uh, way back when Bitcoin was pumping, then once we saw that final um, pullback for Bitcoin, okay, once we saw this, this um, once we saw Bitcoin hit a top and then pull back, okay, and once we were really understanding that this was going to be the end for Bitcoin, what had happened was in and around, uh, it was about here, people were taking their profits out of Bitcoin. This was December 22nd, I believe. Let's bring it to XRP. People were taking their profits out of Bitcoin and actually putting them into not only XRP, but other altcoins as well. Okay, so it wasn't there. Uh, it was, this is December 10th, 11th. Uh, so December 22nd was around here. Uh, we still saw a significant pump for XRP. But uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that what had happened was when people were 
uh, through with Bitcoin, when people were saying, okay, we've milked this cow long enough, let's take our profits, let's take our profits from this lion and stick them into altcoins because they are going to be the next vehicle for us to uh, continue to pump profits into our pockets. So this would have been uh, December 10th, 11th for XRP. This is when XRP started to pump. So there was a significant pullback here for Bitcoin and uh, Bitcoin didn't really have much further to go. And then XRP pumped from about 22 cents to all time highs in the next three weeks after that, capping out at about January 8th or so, uh, which was around here for Bitcoin. So this was all time high for XRP starting in around this day, ending in around this day, and you guys can see the trend. While XRP was pumping to all-time highs, this is what Bitcoin was doing, essentially. From here to, where was it, January 8th. From here to about here, Bitcoin was just kind of forming its double top, and then uh, then we saw the bear market uh, start from there. So back to Anders' point, uh, an interesting strategy. You have to time it right if you're good at that kind of thing. And he's suggesting that XRP could go up a ton. I agree with that just because XRP is one of the top coins on the list here in coin market cap. So, uh, you know, novice traders, if they have no idea what they're getting into, they will likely look at the top, uh, you know, the, the top 10, I'd say, and pump their money into those particular coins. So XRP being number three is in a good position for that. But then he's saying taking his profits and pouring them into a long-term coin. So for him, it's XRP, VET, XDC, ZAP, ZA p and uh, quant q n t just to give you guys a list of anders uh, choices in long-term coins of course everybody is going to be different an interesting strategy you do have to time it right if that's the route you're going to go uh, but just to give you guys some ideas on that xrp crypto wolf brought this up the irs plans to ask every american if they use cryptocurrencies in 2020 so for those of you interested in trading looking to make a profit this year and potentially into 2021 uh, be aware because the IRS is going to be looking over your shoulder. Uh, this from Forbes on August 18th, 2020, the IRS released a draft form 1040 for the 2020 tax year. As you can see in the snippet below, uh, the controversial virtual currency question at any time during 2019, did you receive, sell, send, exchange, or otherwise acquire any financial interest in any virtual currency? Uh, the IRS first introduced the 2019 tax year has been moved from schedule one to the front page of the form 1040. So they are going to be addressing your cryptocurrency trading, not only trading, but also selling, sending, exchanging, or otherwise acquiring any financial interest in any virtual currency. Now, this development is uh, kind of twofold for me because on the one hand, it's, uh-oh, the IRS, they're going to come after us for our cryptocurrency. But on the other hand, this also goes to show that the IRS realizes that since regulatory clarity is becoming clearer for certain aspects of cryptocurrency, they need to do their part in order to tax the American people properly, which I totally get from their perspective. So that's good because um, what that means is that we will see more cryptocurrency trading in 2020 and into the future. Uh, more money is going to be pouring into the crypto space. Right now, the crypto space is holding at about $360.9 billion. That's the market cap. If we see some real meaningful adoption, this could go up three, four, five, tenfold. You know, the sky's the limit at this point for cryptocurrency, especially if Wall Street money, uh, big investors around the world are going to get into this asset class. So I uh, just wanted to touch on that. I also saw this, guys, from the XRP Arcade Ripple lawsuit consolidated. Ripple's motion to dismiss fraud allegations taken under submission. So uh, this from Leonidas on Twitter. Less than a month after moving the Simmons versus Ripple Labs lawsuit from New York to California, the case has been consolidated with an ongoing Zakanov versus Ripple Labs lawsuit in California. At the same time, the Honorable Judge Phyllis J. Hamilton has taken Ripple's motion to dismiss the fraud allegations under submission. On August 6th, a joint motion was filed to get the Simmons case consolidated with the Zakanov case. The motion was granted on August 21st. Special thanks to uh, Hector Acosta Carrillo for sharing this document with us. Uh, and then he shares the document here. Uh, so guys, as you can see, the Ripple lawsuit is progressing slowly but surely. I do think that once this is all cleared, because um, just the other day we heard Tom Emmer say, you know, XRP is not a security. And uh, I believe that is part of what this lawsuit, these lawsuits are about, uh, other than the fact that that guy lost his money and is trying to nail Ripple for it. But I think ultimately, once we get that regulatory clarity, uh, that alone, as I said before, could make XRP price rise. I think FOMO
FOMO will, um, I think that'll be a big piece of news, and I think FOMO will get a run going for XRP. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, maybe to the next level of support, uh, depending where we are at that moment in time. So I've got XRP here on the daily, and uh, we are, you know, we're still, we're doing well, okay? This is where we've come from since the beginning of July, let's not forget. XRP has gone up how much? Since the beginning of July, okay, since July 1st, right here. XRP saw a rally to its interyear high of about 90%, guys, and now, right now, trading at about 28 cents. Uh, we're still up since July 1st, about 61.8%. So that is nothing to scoff at. Let's not forget that. Vitz Vin here uh, also uh, preparing us to claim Spark tokens on the Flare network versus the Sum app. Now, if you guys don't have the Sum app, you can get it from the Google Play Store or uh, the iTunes, the, um, the Apple Store. Tutorial instructions and a tool to prepare for claiming Flare Network Spark tokens uh, are available. While the Flare Network isn't live yet and the Spark token distribution hasn't started, you can already prepare your accounts for some and XRP Toolkit users. Uh, and he links a blog post there. Uh, just going to read you guys a little bit of this. The design of Spark's utility fork for XRP is gradually taking shape. Vitz Vin of XRP Ledger released a tool for some and XRP Toolkit users to claim Spark tokens. So some of you guys are asking, you know, what exchanges can I claim my tokens on? Uh, BitTrue, I believe, is one of them, but now the Sum Wallet is going to be another one. Vitz Vin, founder of XRPL Labs, the software studio behind the development of the XRP Ledger Solutions, has shared details of the process of Spark token distribution among XRP hodlers. He also released an instrument required for the process. And he says, it will consist of three steps. First, the XRP hodler will be asked to create an account for the Flare network. Every account will have a public address and a private key. The private key and the address can already be generated, he says. Then, users of XRP Ledger need to provide account ownership by signing a reference. This reference will be stored on the XRP Ledger and will indicate the Flare Network account that belongs to this or that user. Once the Flare Network is ready, its team will read all XRP Ledger accounts to distribute Spark tokens one-to-one -to, -one to Spark wallets associated with XRPL accounts. However, the accurate timeline for this utility fork has not yet been announced. The Flare Network team will disclose it when they disclose it. So, are you guys excited about getting your Flare tokens one-to-one -one for the XRP that you hold? I think this is a great way uh, to get people more excited about uh, what they're doing on the Flare Network. And not only that, maybe actually get more people to buy more XRP so that they can, in fact, accumulate more Flare tokens down the road. It's kind of like a two-for-one offer. Not quite because they're not worth the same amount but in essence, uh, if you believe the Flare Network will be valuable, uh, you already obviously think XRP is valuable, then you'll actually be able to hold both tokens, which I think is great for the XRPL development as a whole. Anyway, so amazing news coming out of Vitz Vin's camp. Uh, so if you don't have a Sum Wallet, maybe that is the avenue you want to take. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any other options. If you have a BitTrue account, let me know. Put it down in the comments. Give me what your plans are to be able to collect Flare tokens. I know there are some exchanges that are still trying to figure this out, uh, but if if you guys have a plan, put it down in the comments. Uh, I'd be happy to hear what your plan is as well. XRP Crypto Wolf posting this, Ripple Early Investor and Ripple Net Partner Standard Charter Bank said crypto assets are here to stay since they're transforming the financial services industry, especially in the way transactions and settlements are done. Uh, so this, from you today, Ripple Net customers with $720 billion worth of assets under management says crypto is here to stay. So Standard Charter, they're a UK-based financial company with $720.3 billion worth of assets under management, recently made an upbeat statement about the future of digital assets, including cryptocurrencies, via their official Twitter handle. Uh, digital assets, including crypto assets, are here to stay. The new asset class is transforming the financial services industry, especially in the way transactions and settlements are done. XRP is not competing with CBDCs. This was a response to comments made by Indian economist Raghuram Rajan, former governor of the Reserve Bank of India, who'd weighed in on the current state of central bank digital currency. CBDCs Beyond the Valley was the podcast he was on, uh, Rajan argued that both Bitcoin, the world's first cryptocurrency, and Facebook Libra's stablecoin would be competing with CBDCs issued by central banks. 
Uh, I would like to think that these private currencies are also in competition with the central bank digital currency. The Economist also compared Bitcoin to gold in the sense that the intrinsic value of both these mainly depend on public perception. So uh, they're going on here about CBDCs. We know XRP is not there to compete with CBDCs. It's more of that asset class that's going to bridge value from the Libra coin to the USD or Bitcoin to the renminbi or whatever. It's kind of like Switzerland in the mix if you want to think of it as a neutral party that isn't trying to be on bad terms with anybody nor is it trying to compete with anybody. Uh, it is there just as that vehicle, as that center of value in order to conduct these transactions efficiently. And so I think it's going to hold its own value. You know, some people are saying it's going to be backed by this or backed by that. And, you know, the more I think about this and the more I listen to guys like Brad Garlinghouse talk about uh, the intricacies of XRP and, um, you know, even just when he talks about it with people who are interviewing him or whatever, his stance always is XRP will be valuable based on the problem it solves. And if it solves such a problem, it will be huge. It doesn't need to be backed by anything in order to solve a problem. XRP will be utilized in so many different use cases that, you know, it just kind of makes my head spin sometimes. And, uh, you know, for these new use cases that are coming out, I even have to kind of think about it twice to kind of get it straight. So how does this work with XRP? But anyway, guys, sorry I'm going on a bit of a tangent here it is great that Standard Charter is saying digital assets will stay they are going to be revolutionary for the future of finance oh right and the reason I'm talking about XRP as that problem solving currency is because Ripple still is pushing the United States to get on board here this a uh, this a tweet from Ripple just from yesterday afternoon China is winning the financial battle of the tech cold war and it seems by the way that ripple keeps talking about this day in day out uh, relentlessly okay this isn't the first time they've tweeted about this and it probably won't be the last time as a result china will dictate important parts of a new financial global system an unnecessary loss that we had a lot of tools to win so ripple in particular are saying look we have the tools to be number one and it's just not happening why isn't it happening the tech cold war is here and the U.S. isn't winning. This is uh, written by Chris Larson, by the way. Like it or not, the U.S. is already fighting an economic and technological cold war against China. While we should aim to eventually return to the optimism and promise of a broad China-U.S. partnership, the time for that is not now. This is a major challenge to our country, and we must do everything we can to avoid losing our economic leadership. Guys, I'm not going to read this whole article. i uh, just going to read you some, uh, some of it, and then we're going to discuss it a little bit. By now, we all know the rivalry in 5G and AI, part of China's $1.4 trillion technology commitment. Less attention has been given to an equally consequential struggle. Who will control our future global financial systems? You can see here just by the tone of this article that Chris Larson realizes that, uh, you know, Ripple is positioned to be that superpower for the United States. And, uh, you know, the, the U.S. government is letting it slip away. The power and privilege Americans enjoy from the dollar being the world's reserve currency cannot be overstated. While the U.S. makes up 21% of global GDP, the dollar accounts for over 88% of global trade. Part of this privilege comes from America's stewardship of the world's financial infrastructure, giving the U.S. enormous power in international relations and advancing a global economic system based on American values of economic freedom and open access the world including china has also benefited enormously from american stewardship but a moment of fundamental change is upon us and guys this is what's important much of the world's financial infrastructure is based on antiquated technology from the 1970s and faces dramatic change from digital wallets blockchain technology cryptocurrencies and interoperability protocols for China, this is a once-in-a-century opportunity to wrest away American stewardship of the global financial system, including its ultimate goal of replacing the dollar with the digital yuan, and China is on board to do such a thing. Uh, guys, I will link this article in the description if you want to read further. Again, this is Chris Larson writing this, so obviously we know where his mind is at. And it seems as though everything is in place. It seems as though, and you know, pe people are saying this already, uh, that this is this has already been in place for a while. It's just a matter of the regulatory clarity. And so I think there's the issue of, well, governments, or rather the U.S. government wants to make trading cryptocurrencies regulated and clear. Uh, you know, let's just go back to this idea that the IRS plans to ask every American if they use cryptocurrencies in 2020. So, you know, it, th this kind of clarity is becoming clear, but... 
What about the clarity that revolves around using XRP, having banks able to hold XRP as part of their business structure? I think that that is a different type of clarity that maybe the United States isn't addressing. And so we got Rachel here, uh, Rachel Renee on Twitter. Ask yourself this question, why does America have the brakes on for cryptocurrency regulation and clarity? The answer is very important, and uh, we got some responses here from early investor in the IOV. He says, the incumbents control government oversight. They own the SEC. This is the predictable weight of their inertia. Deep, deep penchant for the status quo. Coming to bear on the gears of progress. Until such time, they are assured the outcome will be tilted in their favor. So, the powers that be don't want to uh, relinquish control, relinquish money. They want to capitalize on this system, and so nothing is happening until that has been set in place. Nothing hidden or cryptic, he goes on to say. That's it. It's about the money. The U.S. isn't about fair competition. It's about protecting the monopoly. Until now, thankfully, disintermediation via decentralized, permissionless, trustless networks is central to the theme and design in this new tech. Uh, Crypto Penny Co. answers, The answer is anything concerning the powers that be is always their money, power, and control. In this case, it's all three. Esoteric responds, rails aren't ready. By rails, I mean 5G. Uh, interesting that he mentions 5G because uh, that is something else that's going on in the world that is uh, controversial in its own right, but definitely could have a um, have an impact on cryptocurrency and financial movement across borders. Dave Dobin says, uh, just think of the Democrats and their warmongering companies and corrupt lobby groups in this digital era. All of the corruption becomes transparent. They would be very busy, I would say, moving it all around to cash in or transferring it to legit accounts. Now, this is not a political channel. I always maintain that. Uh, that is the opinion of Dave Dobin. Uh, so whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, I think at the end of the day, we all like money. And what we're really looking for is that clarity so that our investment in XRP will rise. And so I wanted to finish off with this tweet here. Kevin Cage asks, if XRP ever becomes as liquid as a G10 currency, I don't think it would be valued at $1. Uh, Rene DH mentions this, and I thought this was interesting. Yes, for a good system, it must be at least around $120. And so XRP uh, commanding that high price would definitely mean that it is liquid enough in order to transact on that global scale, right? All the money, when we talk about all the money, XRP needs to command a high enough price so that um, we can move all the money. And uh, so Christian Bewley uh, actually did some quick math here in this tweet. He says, I did some quick math. If all of the gold represented all XRP, then the price of XRP, the price of one XRP would be about $124. Assuming I am right, this doesn't take into account derivatives, which is massive. In other words, I think you're being very realistic at the $120 price. Uh, the question is how long? Now, um, this statement is controversial because some people are suggesting that XRP will, will be backed by gold. Others are suggesting it will not be backed by gold. Uh, Christian Buley saying, you know, it would, it would command a $124 price tag if it were backed by gold, just uh, doing some basic math on the amount of gold, the quantity of gold that exists in the world that we have actually mined at this point. But Michael Pinky says XRP will never be backed by anything. This, uh, this is a tweet he retweeted from back in January. Let me just play you this real quick. <laughs> And the reason it is, is as follows, as soon as you go to maintaining the value, right, of some kind of stable coin, uh, a whole set of regulatory concerns get triggered. I have to make sure that there is corresponding uh, financial or real assets backing this, this notion of value that, is, that they seek to maintain. That looks a lot more like a bank, right, because uh, you're promising some, some claims which are fixed and uh, uh, that requires regulation for reasons I just talked about. Now, once you get an army of regulators, every central bank looking at it, then the question is, have you added a whole set of transaction costs to this and is it worth, uh, uh, is it that, that useful? As I understand it, what, uh, what is attempted with XRP is not so much maintaining the value, but offering a vehicle for exchange, which is quite different because there you can have value fluctuating. All you need is value to be stable for 10 seconds while the whole transaction takes place. And as a result, uh, there's a whole different need for regulation. You don't need to regulate value. I don't care. So long as there is some value, the transaction can certainly take place. And as a regulator, I'm not so worried about 
both of this displacing my fiat currency because you're moving from one fiat currency to another. It's just an interim value. And it, it's, it's a means of exchange, but it's neither a store of uh, value nor a unit of account, etc., etc. So did you guys hear that? Not interested in actually having the XRP value stable in a way, because even if it fluctuates, the transaction will only take 10 seconds or so. We know XRP actually takes three to four seconds to settle. But that means, and this gentleman being interviewed says this as well, XRP's value is going to be determined by the supply and demand. He even says, you know, it's it's it doesn't matter if XRP maintains a value. We're not interested in that because of how quick it is. So the real purpose of XRP is not for a store of value, but actually a utility token that is going to be in demand once those rails start opening up and the world starts using RippleNet in a meaningful way. Ripple has been clear about their mandate to replace SWIFT, and as we know, SWIFT conducts $1.25 quadrillion in transactions every single year. So when we talk about all the money, when we talk about XRP liquidity, when we talk about it needing to be uh, $124 if it's backed by gold or whatever other price, the fact of the matter remains. If XRP needs to move $1.25 quadrillion every single year, what price do you think it needs to be? Put it down in the comments because I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.